uh, Jay? Let me relate a, a uh, fun ChatGPT thing that wasn't obvious to me, and I'm not sure it's obvious in general. Um, but it relates to the memory feature in ChatGPT. Um, so you may or may not know that ChatGPT will remember things for you. Um, and I thought that was really dumb because it's like, oh great, you know, I've, I've I talked to ChatGPT about a lot of different things, and I don't need it to remember all those things in one place because I have a, a, a mess of random mid-journey prompts, and you know, why is the uh, why is the sky blue, and you know and uh, write a Python program and blah, 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 right? So I thought memory was going to be really dumb. So at some point, I, I uh, wanted it to remember something. Maybe I was out on a walk or something and was using ChatGPT. And so I said, uh, I, I'm going to put this in vernacular a little bit. This is not actually how, how ChatGPT and I discussed it. But I said, yo, ChatGPT, could you keep separate memories for different things? And it says, oh yeah, sure, no problem. So I'm like, okay, well, remember this set of things, you know, remember, I, I, let me ask you a couple of questions and then remember that under a particular, you know, category. So at some point I had one or two categories. I asked it what it wants to call those categories um, because category didn't sound right or whatever word I was using. So uh, the answer, at least for me was, well, let's call them projects or topics. So I'm up to like four topics or something, and it seems really interesting. Uh, one of the things that I accidentally, maybe not accidentally, one of the things that just occurred to me is like, uh, this was on the uh, Monday Feature His Brain Call. Um, uh, people started talking about books, as we do on these calls. And so... I, I went, ha, huh, another thing that ChatGPT could remember for me. So I said, hey, ChatGPT, make a project, call it Books Mentioned on Call, and add these books. So it did it. And now it's got that, you know, now I can say, hey, ChatGPT, what books have I told you to remember, you know, during calls? So, so of course, um, just earlier I said, hey, ChatGPT, let's think about the um, books that came up on calls uh, project. And uh, do you know the Cyber Feminism Index? And it goes, yeah, sure. Here's the Cyber Feminism Index and a little bit about it, right? Do you want me to add it to the project? And I'm like, yep, add it to the project. So um, so this seems like a really cool feature of ChatGPT to uh, be a... <laughs> I'm going to use uh, it, it. It's uh, a very, very, very light version of Jerry's uh, brain, right? Um, uh, ChatGPT is starting to remember classics of things for me. Um, I have a, a separate kind of inquiry. I wonder what tools we we thought we talked about tools for thought um, in the age of conversational AI is, is the way I think of it on Jerry's brain. So, you know, how is how am I going to work with a chatbot that is keeping a knowledge graph rather than a bunch of whatever JSON files it's got right now? So that's another kind of open inquiry for me. Um, but uh, one last thing that blew me away um, when uh, I, I was asking a, a thing and it said, this reminds me of one of your projects. It relates to the project blah in this way. So unprompted, it recalled something out of one of uh, its memories for me and said, you know, I just made a connection for you. I, I just had a thought that there's a connection. It didn't keep track of that connection unless I, I told it to. So blew me away. Um, quite interesting, quite, uh, quite fun. Uh, I recommend playing with ChatGPT memories and projects. That, that's very cool. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. yeah. Um, that makes sense, and I, I, I was, I guess my reflection is I was, um, I'm not surprised at, at the ending of the story, because <laughs> I, uh, I guess I, I was more of into the potential of the memory feature uh, when I uh, hear it. Actually, I, uh, by the time they announced it, uh, announced it, I think I have been having six months of checking, like, can you remember stuff yet? Because you clearly will. And at some point, I even said, like, hey, could you just write code to query your API to retrieve uh, past conversations and include in the context? Because then you have memory, yep. you know? Yep. And they were like, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> it's like, but uh, um, so I guess just to, just to point out that 
um, I think individual memory makes a lot of sense because of like, you know, the potential you're seeing, but I think community memory makes yep. to me, I mean, even more sense maybe. Like yep. I would love to be able to like share projects essentially. And I would love to be able to do that with you and everybody in the call, but not in an open AI specific way. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, you know, it could, it, I could take the shape of, you know, like this uh, ever growing system prompt that uh, encodes the memory for our projects that is just put in the commons or something. Maybe. Um, I like it a lot. That would be awesome. I think you will. So I, I will write that down as share memory in the commons <laughs> as a potential project. It reminds me of uh, somehow we got into a conversation about how AI might in, in the free Jerry's brain call Monday, um, how might ch uh, chat assistance, uh, lang I, I like to call them language enabled assistance. How would language enabled assistance help help uh, like a large meeting? Um, and I kind of like just brainstormed the I, I feel like humans go pretty slow at making connections and talking in a in a meeting. Um, and so it seemed obvious that each person would have their own conversational assistant or assistants, maybe a couple of them. And the assistants can have a conversation uh, together. And then the human conversation with each assistant, each personal mm -hmm. assistant goes slower, right? Right. Um, so you can be in a in a game where you're interacting with the the meeting participants, um, and you're interacting with your assistant, and your assistant knows more about what you want to do. You can move faster than the meeting individually, and your assistant can be uh, interfacing with the other assistants a lot quicker that way too. So at some point, you you can start to think about the assistants going. Hey, did you know that Pete is actually interested in this thing? Let's steer the conversation. Mm -hmm. Or, um, you know, there's uh, I, the assistants together have seen an opportunity for negotiation between two different positions, or or something like that, right? Right. So, an interesting feature. Yeah, definitely, because it seems like uh, in the, this UI, UX, in particular, if people um, become used to it. Uh, because of you know the usefulness of like some of the early words, it, it has the potential to become like this universal interface, like we say. Yeah. And yeah, and a lot of the projects that we discuss here, I think they can be uh, powered up by having uh, this as a, as an interface. I think. Um, I, I like what you what you mentioned about like, hey, do you know that this other participant has this opinion? Right. I think yeah. or. Uh, and I would be interested, for example, like, they, they could say, like, you know that you agree on this and they actually disagree on this. Like, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, this is a one the, this is the one of the um, like user journeys or something that I would love to have in a social platform. Like, do you, now that you know everything you have in common, can you disagree meaningfully and like uh, civilly and, you know, grow? Yeah. Uh, like in this call, what do we say, yeah. disagree on? Maybe we should look for that. <laughs> So this is one of the reasons, this is really one of the use cases I've been hoping for, for the big fungus and why I published my brain outside and why I want other people to play with open global mind is that if, if some of this is external and maybe it's being held by our AI assistant and the way Pete's describing, I don't know, but then something, someone could come in and say, hey, it turns out that you guys agree on 60% of this set of issues. And I've, you know, here are the 40% you disagree on, and I've ordered some wine for you, <laughs> yes. uh, so you can have a nice conversation. But right. Absolutely. Definitely. But an antigen, I hear. Yes. I mean, don't you worry about though the exact same thing happening with the brain? happening with this stuff but even worse he's if you look at putting this into something like chat gpt right you're trapping that data into an even more obscure format 
we can't really get it out as data. We have to ask it a question and then we have to, like if we wanted to automate it, we'd have to parse a string and hope that chat GPT consistently repeats that string in the same pattern over and over again, which I'll admit is pretty reliable, but not a hundred percent reliable. I, I'm uh, pretty sure. Uh, and it's I'm in somebody sure else's even, platform. I, uh, uh, I I appreciate the uh, skepticism. I, even now, though, I think I could say dump dump all my projects in JSON, and it would. So, For now, right? But like this is the exact thing that we faced a million other times, right? Yeah. It all looks good. It's very it's very nice about giving us interactivity and the ability to port stuff out of it until the moment it becomes more monetarily advantaged to not. And now all of your stuff is trapped in there, and it has even less of a reliable export. Like, at least the worst case scenario with the brain is at least I could crawl the text on the HTML of the page and extract stuff out of it. But with ChatGPT, if it says tomorrow, um, it's really cool you're using this memory feature, pay $5 if you want to keep using it, you don't have anything. It's you've, I, you've removed the data. A, a different way to think about it is I have never used ChatGPT except for maybe like the first half of a week. I've never used it without knowing that I can back everything up verbatim. So literally I have all my conversation with ChatGPT ever backed up as markdown files in an obsidian you know, vault um, mm -hmm. backed up into GitHub or something like that. So I, as soon as as soon as I feel enclosure, I maybe enclosure is the wrong word. As, as soon as I feel I can't do um, uh, the Google takeout thing, I'm, I, I stop using it. I I won't. Yeah. And, yeah, uh, but I do think like it comes back to sort of our roles in the community to the extent that we're there, right? Like not everybody is going to back it up into Markdown files or know to do that or think to do that. And by being people who are like technical leaders in this space to some extent, right? You're essentially encouraging people to trap their data into a system that has zero transparency, is closed source, and well, could I, be so turned off on you at any time. It's removing it from the internet functionally. <laughs> I, I think people will keep putting it back. And I love uh, Flancian's idea of commons memories. So I should keep exporting stuff and putting it into the commons. I, we have run this story already. Uh, Jerry was using the brain, and I looked at Jerry's brain, and I said, oh my god, I have to have a thing like that, but there's no way it's going to be uh, proprietary. And that's what got me into wikis. And so 20, 25 years later, whatever, Jerry has a uh, half million thoughts in one cohesive uh, knowledge graph, and I have a thousand tiny little wikis splattered across time and space, and I can't find anything in any of them. <laughs> so, <laughs> but both approaches are beautiful in their own way, right? They are. I, you know, I have to say the Google. I, I, I used to have one wiki, and it was a public wiki. I didn't have a private wiki. I only had a public wiki, and I could Google any use Google to find anything in it, right? So I need. Uh, I need. I, I am commons oriented, but I need the support of other commons people, no. um, or you know, I'm not going to have my brain for very long, unlike Jerry. And 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 Adam, also to, to your uh, concern, which I think is, is very legitimate and something we should prepare for, if nothing else, to design in a resilient way. I think developing tools to make it easier to get into out of world gardens into the commons. Uh, that will be like, well, I think the goal, one of the goals we have, yeah, we, we can have here, uh, it is harder than, than, than saying it for sure, like uh, it's just an andana, I guess is the, the expression, in particular as they, they keep closing APIs, right? Like, you know, Twitter used to be almost in the commons. I, I was a uh, remember the other day and seeing a lot of my old posts. I used to write to the Agora from Twitter because, you know, I had this bot that when you use double square brackets in Twitter, immediately you got ingested into the, into the Agora and you follow the Agora bot. That worked amazingly for two years and then you used Twitter a lot and then it went and it's not coming back, it seems, right? So 
Uh, and at that point, you know, uh, unfortunately, it's, uh, it, it becomes harder to also develop like general, generally useful tools to let people get out of vulnerabilities because the API is already closed. Yeah, once it's once they make the change, it often means the stuff is going to get lost and it gets too late. Yeah. I, I like the idea of more automation around it. It might be cool to imagine something like uh, a browser plugin that automatically scrapes everything you put into ChatGPT and dumps it yeah. into yeah. a file or a markdown file or something yes. else somewhere else. Exactly. This is a, this particular kind of uh, device plugin project. I sort of believe is one of the most important things that can be developed and made popular. And we don't have a word for it. I actually, I have found a few of these projects, including one that, uh, that's what I wonder, which is like that for, but for social media. Like if you're scrolling through a timeline, there's no reason not to grab a copy essentially, right? And, and like uh, in, a, in a good format. Uh, I mean, if you, re if you believe in data sovereignty and so on. Um, and yeah, maybe, Maybe that's a good kind of project to support. You know, we should catalog those projects, support them, and try to make them easier to use. Yeah, I, I mean, I really like um, Rhizome's conifer for that sort of thing, but it does have the disadvantage of it's just work files. And there are a lot of things that work files are good for, but being searchable on mass is not one of them. Uh, so I think there needs to be something in between, like a work file, which is a straight up archive of your engagement with a particular web page, and like plain text. But I, I don't know what it is. It's something to think about. Yeah. Um, I think the semantic web people should. I think, oh, yeah, thank you. I, I was looking for the uh, reference, Jerry. Conifer. Right. Yeah, and I thank you for this. I will I'll check it out. I know of at least one or two more projects in this space. And like sometimes I want to like just take a week of work and install them all and like, you know, see which one I, uh, is recommendable, essentially. Because I don't know. So this this reminds me of the crazy Microsoft AI thing that remembers everything yeah. you do on your on your exactly. Windows PC, which I, right. I can't believe I was in a call where people were talking about it and nobody said paperclip. I couldn't I couldn't believe it. <laughs> I mean, it, it, Microsoft could own a Clippy, like be like the, the right. you know, and say like we're going to do Clippy right. That would be like um, well interesting at least. <laughs> To own your failures. I mean, I think again, it's got that problem of being trapped into someone else's system. Not to mention the fact that, like, I, I don't care how useful it is. I really don't want Microsoft to have a screenshot of every single thing I do on my computer. <laughs> but but I do want to have those screenshots. That's the thing. I think it is yeah. so useful, no? It was once, uh, I once had a, a business meeting with a guy at Edelman Public Relations in Manhattan. And I remember he said, oh, oh, I have a document I want to sh you know, show you. And he then spent 10 minutes desperately searching through uh, directories on SharePoint and never found the document he was looking for. So for me, listening to the recorder, uh, the recall announcement uh, and, the, and the Copilot Plus announcement was a little bit like, Oh, wow. OK, so Microsoft has been hapless on search and finding stuff. They're going to make a feature out of the most pathetic defect they've had for years and years. And then they're going to do it wrong. Yeah, I remember. It was, even, was, was it Google Desktop Search? It's not we're not just going to search the Internet for you, but we're going to search all your own documents for you. Well, I and like that. I, my, I use Google Docs intensively and, G, and Gmail also. And if I search, if I search through the, that those things, it works. So Google, you mean that Google indexing of your own desktop stuff? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. On your computer. Yeah. So it's, like, and that's part of the problem, I think, is 
it's one thing if you're all bought into Google products and you can search everything you've got on Google and find it. Although yeah. I don't even know if if I did, I, I, where would I go to search Google and find, I, I, I can search an email and find things pretty quickly. And it also finds things in my chats when I've had them there, but it doesn't find the things in my Google docs. And there's, you know, there's some firewalls between products that they've got. I think that prevents that, but I think that's the biggest issue for a lot of people is I know I had this thing and I put it somewhere and you need some memory of, did I put it into a folder on my own desktop? Right. Did I put it into Google docs? Did I, you know, or the perennial question, like, you know, I see twice, three times a week and even the obsidian space, you know, should I have one vault or multiple vaults, you know, and usually the, the rule of thumb, I think for there, everybody seems to like have one for personal stuff and then one separate for work stuff. So that if you quit your job or do something, you can like segment those things off. But you know, having just one spot where you can search everything is a massive boom. And I don't know why that is not more extant across. And that's, you know, that's a very friends of the linky kind of thing. And also it's someone can charge you for their silo being searchable and exclude the other silos from being searchable to encourage you to only pay them. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah, is yeah. also the reason why whenever someone strikes up a conversation on LinkedIn mess messages, oh. I immediately say, hey, here's my email. Let's move it over there where I have a chance of ever finding this conversation again. So yeah. it's funny because, I mean, this is what has gone wrong with the internet, right? Um, you know, with the lack of yeah. the commons, I get in the last 30, 20, 30 years. And I sort of feel like maybe here's where I get on top of the soapbox. We should write an okay. open letter. Because like we can say, see everything that has gone wrong with the internet over the last 20 years that we all complain about all the time because it's, by now it's like a cliche to say that the internet sucks, even though it's, it's amazing. Eh? Uh, all of that will happen again to your brain <laughs> if you if we go into the direction we're going to the direction of like thinking with AI. So do you want that to happen? If not, take action now. Join the fellowship of the link. I don't know. Uh, maybe we, <laughs> we stop before the end. Send but, us you know? ten dollars a month now. Uh, or, or like you know, no, it should be free. But like, <laughs> but there's no business right. model. Right. Uh, well, like, yeah. also related to that is the when you're having a conversation with chat GPT, when you walk away, are you going to do the same thing most people do in real life? Like, I heard an idea and suddenly now it's my idea. It didn't come from somewhere else. It came from me. Or as my daughter would have said when she was three years old, myself told myself. Like, where, where did you get that idea, Evie? Like, oh, myself told myself. Um, and it just means she couldn't remember where it came from, but it's hiding in her head. Or but my other favorite is usually and you're in a conversation with four or five people and a woman comes up with a great idea and invariably a minute later, no. One of the men in the group will repeat it as if it's his own comp his own idea, and then yeah. he walks away with it and the credit, rather than, you know, and that's where you get into that fungible space where that the AI takes over because you are the AI eventually, you know. Right. Yeah, I mean, this is like um, there's a oh, it's something with an R. Uh, speaking of words, I need to add this to like my glossary of words that I'm building. Uh, but there's a word for it uh, that uh, is in the age of surveillance capitalism that she uses that's really uh, basically like the equivalent of like reifying. Um, Here's my notes, or rather not my notes, but the notes that I uh, sort of grabbed from someone else, thankfully. Uh, 
rendition, right? The idea is that the systems are intended to collect data from us, but the easiest way to collect the data, data from us is to force us to produce specific data, right? So the, the, this process where chat GPT is producing data for us and then we take credit for it makes us dependent on chat GPT, but it isn't, it isn't just that, right? Like it is influencing how we make decisions ourselves and as a group. It's changing how we interact with the world because it has, um, yeah, it, she uses it in a way that is inconsistent with anyone else. Another reason I don't like that book, but she describes the phenomenon effectively. It probably what's closer is reification, which is the the Marxist thinking terminology, which she pretends doesn't exist. Uh, Let's see. Right. What's the book in question? Spell yeah. in. That? Well, the Age of Surveillance Capitalism is the book. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't think any of those are the ones that she, or the definition she uses. I will uh, use. I will pull her the quote here. Because um, you've got it indexed well. Good for you. Yeah, I, let's see. Well, here we go. And you can use that. Hmm. Um, I, think, I think I have that in my own highlights that are public facing now. Uh, let's see, and I can give you a nice link. Let's see. Hmm. Hmm. See, at least it didn't take you twenty minutes to try and search for <laughs> it, and then you couldn't come up with it. Yeah, that's a relief. Yeah. Oh, wow. I think my problem here is I have too many quotes that are applicable here. Um, well, there's a whole bunch of them, and I need a better way to search my site other than pull. I realized I can pull it up in my tool for making the site, but because there's not public facing search, it's very difficult for me to give you the actual link to it. Well, that's a to do. OK. <laughs> You'll just have to buy it. A copilot of PC. Uh, Flancy, oh, good you're, lord! You're, Flancy, you're muted. <laughs> I saw you talking animatedly, but we didn't hear you. Yeah, thank you. I don't know how that happened, actually. Yeah. I was gonna say uh, this is the part, the part where I say if we put all our notes and all our stuff in one place. Yeah. Then we could share the search infrastructure. If only there was like an agora for that. Yeah, or something like that. Well, the problem is we've got this building in in Washington D.C. called the Library of Congress that has I mean, been I mean, there already. <laughs> it's not imminently usable for the things you need it for on a day to day basis. So it's not just having it and having it on file. It's yeah. the it's the, I mean, have... the links okay. to and from, or even. In your case, Aram, like you do a quick search and you come up with a hundred things that then you need to skim through the hundred things to find the one. How do you, you know, narrow that down much more quickly? Yeah, I mean, the problem is I just, I have neglected to create a search um, function here. But let's see. Yeah, I mean, I have a, let's see, I have some good quotes that I can, I can link here. And I have another set of, uh, you know, markdown files you can put into the Agora if you wanted to, but I do feel like uh, they may not be in a format that's useful 
for the for the agora there. Oh, uh, yeah. but that's a that's an agora a problem. Don't worry. That's <laughs> great. I, I literally put in there stuff that is not even parts currently. And just like, it's okay. a problem for the future. Well, I'll give you the source and it's another one, another set of markdown things you can um, pull in. Though I am warning you, there's uh, a lot. That's uh, where awesome. It, yeah, this is part of my project from what I linked earlier, where I'm exporting a bunch of stuff from various social networks and turning it into posts. Um, and the ones that's useful for this conversation or that, that I was referring to in this conversation is I found a service that lets me pull every single highlight from my Kindle account and turn it into JSON. And then I turn those into Markdown. Um, doesn't, read write do some, doesn't the paid version of read write do some of that? Paid version of read write? I don't know what that is at all. <laughs> The read readwise, I think. Readwise, yes. Maybe I got the name wrong. I don't read that. Well, readwise will not only do that, but it'll give you a nice pull quote card with the text, and then an, an image of the cover of the book, or you know, some other thing to make it pretty, so you can share it on social media. So, so I want it to be pretty. Uh, I want it to be raw, Jason. <laughs> So someone actually contributes those to the Agora, and they are super cool. I, I use, that, uh, use that a lot. Uh, they look like this. I mean, yes. I'm almost tempted to subscribe to Readwise just for the prettiness of that one thing. But yeah. And I'm shocked that no one else has coded up the ability to do that anywhere else in a quick and easy way. I mean, the answer is because it's definitely illegal. Like you are violating the Kindle terms of service. Yeah. <laughs> that that is why. <laughs> but civil disobedience solves that, no? <laughs> yes, I, I agree with you. I'm just saying I can see why a company might hesitate yeah. um, to make a business out of that. This is why it's a, such a good fit for the commons, no? <laughs> then we can do it for the good of the commons and not uh, for a business. I agree, though it's it's just as illegal when we do it for the commons, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, but you're, you're fair use to advertise the cover of the book and separately to have, a, you know, less than 500 word pull quote from it. It's not like you're taking social media and posting, hey, here's the book and, you know, take the whole thing in some sense. But doing yeah. that also may be another question, so... Yeah, um, there's a lot that's allowed in theory, but certainly scraping the Kindle API in a way that the terms of service does not to generate it um, puts you in some danger if that's your whole business, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah this just reminds me that I really need to fix my site also so that you can get all the quotes by book. A thing that I have not solved for yet, unfortunately. Eh. Out of curiosity, I don't know if I missed this because I came in late. Did anyone do the homework from the last meeting? Shit. What was the homework again? Oh my goodness. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I had kid health care issues, so I oh, don't this... even know that there was a homework thing. I think we have it here. We had to post something, didn't we? We had to post something. Come back next week with ideas in any form. Oh, semi -lane. Damn it. You know, we need uh, a reminder email halfway through the week. It's like, hey, we agreed to do this. Mine is not quite finished. Um, I was hoping to have it finished. But I did post it as a stub um, with this new functionality on the site that I took from um, the person who kindly allowed me to branch their code um, and use it for my own site, um, which has a lot of the things that, you, that we were discussing. And in terms of like the open letter sort of as my candidate for that. And also if you go in here, I'll share, cause I think this is a really cool UI, but sort of easy to miss. Let's see. 
Good lord. Something changed in OSX and now like she oh, there you go, you got it. Just scroll down. And if you see series listings and click to open. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the idea that you were talking about, Flancian, is discussed in all of these things, which are articles by other people. Mm -hmm. Um that I uh that you might be interested in reading. Uh, Thank you. They're all very useful. Very cool. So, uh, right. So this is essentially all right. This is your comment on this uh, article, essentially, or yeah, yeah. Yes. As part of a series of other things with pull quotes from the article. Amazing. Thank you. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like the idea of having a series. It's due. It says due because I haven't like published it. It's if you scroll up, you can see it's um, this is an indie web convention. Yeah. It's a stub, so because it's not finished yet, and I started it May second, um, in one form or another, and then built on it, inspired by our conversation. So it's still a stub. That's just why it says due. At some point, I will finish it. Very cool. Thank you. <laughs> so, so, and that was the other thing. If you click enter, this is also a stub uh, right there at the bottom. This was a concept, sort of thinking about what do we do to get out of these things. Um, I'm part of another group that deals with the questions of surveillance capitalism called ESC, Escape from Surveillance Capitalism, or something. Yeah like that, um, depending on how you want to do it. I was like, okay, if you escape, thinking of Molly White's essay, which described the current state of the web as like a big city with limitless gardening space outside of it that nobody's bothered to garden, how do you enter that big empty space and start growing it? And so I came up with that too. And that's my, my homework submission, <laughs> those two things. That's uh -huh. an Inspiring, an inspiring show of homework, Adam. Thank you. <laughs> so I think uh, now, now we, I think part of our homework uh, becomes like uh, reading this for next time. Uh, <laughs> and maybe, yeah, being inspired and doing the, something, something like this. I, definitely open to feedback. They're both pretty rough. That's why they're stubs, because I haven't finished them yet. But I figured put something out for this meeting. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. So now we need a bot yeah. to remind us halfway through the week to pay attention to this again. A mattermost bot. There has to be some way to do it. Yeah, there has to be. Pete's so, already asked um, chat GPT to find something on GitHub. Yeah, that would be something it's probably good at, actually. <laughs> I, I would actually just write it, ask it to write a, a plug-in. I haven't, uh, I, I, I have written a couple of Mattermost plugins, but um, uh, but I haven't asked ChatGP to write one yet. I've asked it to write a whole bunch of other stuff. I have a, I, I like uh, to go back a ways. I like Flancian's uh, open letter idea. And I think it won't work um, because most people will find it too challenging. Uh, or, or most people, if you ask them the question, do you care? They would say no. Um, so I, I think uh, another approach, not to exclude Flancian's approach, I don't mean to. Uh, uh, I, I don't mean to say that we shouldn't follow it necessarily, but another approach um, is just to continue to make things that commonize stuff, commonize stuff, uh, easier and, and more likely to be used. So kind of just diffuse, you know, the, 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 the tools and processes and stuff in a way that people adopt it without understanding that there's a whole manifesto that they're... Yeah that they're kind of echoing. So focus, focus on uh, improving usability of common yeah. friendly tools. Yeah.
and it feels like that's more likely to to be productive. Maybe that's what Microsoft's recall is supposed to be. Ha uh -huh. Maybe. They do own GitHub, is it, etc. Is it really called recall? <laughs> Don't have recall, no. It's a I believe terrible so. name. All they need now is Arnold Schwarzenegger to promote it. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like when it breaks and they have to recall it, you know? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> For anybody who thought that the COVID vaccines were Bill Gates' attempt to put chips in our bloodstream, I'm sure recall is going to go over really well. <laughs> I wonder if it's going to be one of the things, these things which is just so useful that uh, people uh, don't care about the implications. Well, part of the problem, I think, uh, so Gordon Bell just died recently, and he was the My Life blog guy who was wearing a camera and recording everything. And I think one of the conclusions of his experiment was, oh, if you record everything, it's too much, and it's very hard to find shit because you just have too much stuff to get through. So A, better search tools, but B, better, more selectivity, better curation. And I'm thinking, actually, this all that goes out the window with uh, LLMs, though. Does it all go out the window? Maybe. Yeah, it does. Is it? Really? Well, I'm, that's part of the value of having it kind of reasonably well indexed and sub indexed so that you can do progressively tighter searches on the thing you really want. Hmm. Yeah, but it, yeah, yeah, definitely. But uh, uh, but it could be that you know, uh, like uh, if if not if not full LLM, just uh, like embeddings. We were discussing embeddings in our uh, discuss uh, recently. Just like the the idea of uh, you know being able to train embeddings that have that give you semantic search. That's sort of like the kind of thing that was like like a research paper, like I don't know. 10, 20 years ago, I don't know how long, and now it's just like table stakes. So maybe we are going into like that being a sole problem. I don't know. I mean, it's just like you think that LLM solves it, but there's so much in, it depends on how it's implemented, right? Like if you're depending on feeding this stuff into a one that's trained on a whole bunch of other stuff that's similar, it may end up obscuring the things you want to remember. Yeah because there's so much of them and so much of everything else and something else is more common. And th I don't think there's gonna be a, an easy vocabulary or a way to describe what a particular model actually contains and what, what, you know, what, what it was trained on, what its biases are, what it can, and how it's changed over time. Mm -hmm. that, seems, that seems hard to, to understand and share. In particular, if it's not in line with the incentives of the uh, entities providing the services, yeah, which maybe exactly. don't want particular entity. Well, hack. On, on the on the other other hand, um, uh, just reasonably standardized LLM stuff is is essentially a commodity right now, a cheap commodity, and there's enough open versions of it, you know, open asterisk versions of it. Um, and I, I think if, if you had a corpus, if uh, Gordon Bell had a terabyte or 10 terabytes or 100 terabytes or whatever, um, I think we're not that far away from having a, you know, 100 billion, 100 trillion, or 1, one trillion uh, parameter model that has general understanding and you say, Hey, this is you know my life. My life. Find the stuff in it. I think that's going to happen. Yeah. I, we're not quite there yet, but we're not that far away either. Yeah, I agree. I also like the idea of uh, Chris's progressive uh, progressive indexing and stuff like that. And and you would think that you would want your LLM to be doing that in the background all the time, kind of with everything that you've got. 
Yeah. I got a drop, unfortunately. Good talking with you all. Yeah, likewise. Same, same, same here. here. Yeah, likewise, yeah. yeah. I, I thought I was going to stick for a few minutes, but then I got hooked. So, <laughs> that's so nice to hard to stay away. <laughs> Good luck with re-enter, everybody. Later. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, folks. Bye.